Hello, everyone. This is Mind Body TV Live. I'm Dr. Kim Duramo, and I am super excited to be doing today's episode on manifesting health. Not only because this is probably the number one thing that my work is really about as a physician, as an intuitive, where I've really been sort of playing with assisting others is like, how do we have physical, tangible, expression of our health how do we manifest that how do we embody that how do we receive that instead of trying to like work hard and make it happen this is probably the biggest thing that my work has been of service for uh, but also because today is the first episode that we are doing for members only in the mind body membership community so i am super excited to have everyone here i'm so excited for how many people jumped in to join the membership um there are a lot of really great resources that are in the members area and i'll be adding more very regularly so stay tuned for that and for those of you here live i definitely want to hear where you're tuning in from what manifesting health means to you or anything you've done to sort of try to manifest health, but sometimes it's like two degrees off center. We're, we're working at it or where we think we gotta be the ones like I've gotta create it myself. And it's really something we have to receive. So I'd love to hear a little bit for you and, and how this topic interests you. And also welcome to those listening to the recording um, for any members who are listening to the recording. And we will be sending this episode out later on down the road. So for anyone who's listening to this in the future, hello to you as well and welcome. So for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Kim Duramo. I've been a physician, emergency medicine physician for several years, but really transitioned my whole practice over into more of a wellness-based practice that's for chronic illness, autoimmune disease, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, all of these things where people are like, what the heck is going on? And they have a sense like, mm, I don't think the conventional model really is nailing what's actually happening for me and really calling it out of what's going on and what I can do to address it. And so for so many people, it's like, there's no solution for you. There's nothing we can do, or you're just gonna have to manage this the rest of your life. And that is completely false. And I'll be sharing in today's episode specifically why and what's really going on. So um, if you are someone who has been working at manifesting like health, wealth, you know, things in the three dimensional world that affect your body and you're wondering like what's really going on, it, this could be easier, this is supposed to be fluid or there's supposed to be so much more showing up, what can I do to open up the floodgates here? Stay tuned for today's episode, and I think you'll be really excited about what I'm sharing. So hello to Alex and Angela and Michael, beautiful Michael, Lauren, uh, Stacy and Courtney. Hi. <laughs> and Rachel, Joni, yes. Okay, awesome, everyone who's here. Hi. Okay, so I definitely would like to hear what this has been um, – you know what what this has been for you what's it meant to you with your body what obstacles have you come up on with kind of like trying to heal your body or trying to have better health or trying to have more agility and vitality and you know if it's anti-aging or whatever's going on jennifer hello so glad to be here wouldn't miss the opportunity to be in this community thank you okay Alex says, I'm tuning in from Arizona. Hey, cool, that's not far from here in Durango. I've been following your work for a little over a year, and just this week, I finally started to get it. Awesome. I actually get a lot of comments when people will say, oh, I've listened to a lot of these things you've said, and then today it went in like 10 levels deeper, or it all opened up for me. So sometimes we get it like mentally, like, yep, yep, this makes sense, but it's not like we're not embodying it yet. So let yourself just percolate as long as you need to, and it will come in. Because this is all work that connects you with what you already know within you, with how your system already operates, with the wisdom that's already in your body. Not a matter of, let me tell you these things, and you got to do these 10 steps, or here's the real secret to whatever. It's always a matter of, how can I assist you in connecting more fully with yourself? So having said that, just have a few deep breaths as we begin. That's always the most important thing that we do is just be centered and present to come in to connect with what's happening, connect with our body. 
Okay, so I want to share as you just continue to breathe and receive this episode. Um, why does this work? What is the connection between the physical and the energetic? Energetic meaning thoughts, feelings, emotions, ideas, beliefs. We don't really think thoughts are physical things, but over the last decades of medical research, we see that thoughts are actually very physical things. There are neurochemicals, there are hormones, there are all kinds of um, areas of the body, you know, brain activity that lights up. There's physical stuff happening depending on our thought. So if you're having the thought, oh, my life's so hard, I'll never make it, why even bother? What is this person even talking about? This is never gonna work for me and you sort of light up the brain activity of all the times you've ever failed, like what you're doing is you're conjuring up a physical state and a brain activity state that matches that. You'll think of and, and remember all the times that you did fail or someone disappointed you that said, hey, I can help you, I've got these amazing answers and yeah, it's gonna be the be all end all. And you're like, wow, I really trusted them and then I was disappointed, yeah, it's because Everything out there is crap and nothing's really going to make a difference for me. So what happens is you're on the channel of that frequency. You're on the channel of that thought. And thought isn't just this etheric intangible. It's actually a physical chemical experience in the body. And what we've seen in the study of psychoneuroimmunology, psycho being your thoughts and beliefs and ideas, emotions, um, neuro is all of your brain activity and communication systems through the body. And then immunology, of course, is your immune system. It's also a matter of psychoneuroendocrinology you know, because we found that the whole endocrine system is completely linked into this as well. So these aren't separate. So when we think of, oh, there's just my thoughts and feelings over there, but here's the hardcore medical stuff, they aren't separate at all. In fact, all of your thoughts are informing a physical chemical experience in your body, and it does immediately affect your immune system, your ability to fight off diseases or virus or Lyme disease or Epstein-Barr virus or whatever. Um, it immediately affects your hormone system, your endocrine system, your metabolism, your digestion, uh, even like your body temperature, um, your adrenal glands. And there are so many things we can do with, you know, physical medicines like drugs and prescriptions, diet, all kinds of things like that, that do affect these symptoms, uh, these systems in your body. None of them have been shown to be anywhere near as powerful as your own psychosocial system, your own psychology, what you think, what you feel, how you believe, what your perspective of the world is, the judgments and assumptions that you hold. So this is not like a 2% or 5% of the equation, but hey, what really matters is I got to make sure I eat right. What really matters is I got to find the right supplement or drug or whatever. No, this is the biggest part of the equation when we look at the whole of medical innovation, when we look at the whole of pharmacology and pharmaceuticals. In fact, every pharmaceutical study needs to compare itself to this factor, the factor of what you believe. And that's called like with the placebo effect, they look at 70% of people will get better just because of placebo. What is that? There's an alignment of I receive well-being, I receive health and healing, and I allow that physical change to take place. Because with placebo, people don't just think they feel better. There are physical chemical changes that are shown to take place in the body. That's more than 70% of what's happening in the equation of healing with any pharmaceutical drug or even surgery, which is kind of crazy if you're not aware. There have been placebo um, surgeries where they'll kind of pretend to go into the the knee and operate on the knee or whatever part of the body and not even, they'll make little tiny superficial incisions and then stitch it up, but they've never actually entered the knee or done a surgical procedure. And the, the people who went through the sham procedure would have improvement to the same degree as, or even more, as the people who had the physical surgery. So there's a placebo effect, even just through the psychological experience of, I've gone through surgery, so therefore now I can experience healing that there are physical changes, chemical changes that occur in the body that allow healing 
um, even though they've not done a physical surgery. So it's it applies to chemical drugs, it applies to physical procedures and surgeries. This effect in your body is the greatest effect that we have been shown medically that can make a difference in your health. So I'm gonna just look over at these um, comments. Maddie says, great to be here today from Utah. That's cool, because that's a neighboring state for Colorado as well. We're over in the, the west side of the state, so um, we get over to Utah a lot too. Rita says, I'm confused about being a creator and letting go of being the creator. This is a great um, sort of shift that needs to happen when we understand manifestation. Okay, I'm going to manifest health. I'm only going to focus on the positive or I'm only going to focus on, you know, I feel good. I'm not going to think about how tired I really feel. And we try to make it happen. Well, the truth is <clears throat> we're here to receive what we need in order to heal, not to be the one to create it. So when we think of like, I'm a co-creator, well, I'm the one who says what's allowed and what comes in and what I'm willing to receive. So for example, with money, you can hold the belief, I am abundant and I receive everything I need all day long. But if you're unwilling to actually have the physical experience, you'll keep blocking out more wealth. I had, um, I think it's like a year, and actually more than a year and a half, because it was right before I got pregnant with my second child. I had this awareness, Kim, slow down, turn off, go hang out at the spa, spend the afternoon doing that, and that's going to create more in your business. That's going to create more in your wealth. That's going to create more in your entire life. And my mind was like, but, 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 because I still had a little like, oh, uncomfortable, like discomfort with that. Now, if it had been a year prior, I would have just bumped it out entirely. No, 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 that's airy-fairy, that's not gonna happen. But at that point in my life, I was willing to receive it and begin to have the lifestyle that I always wanted, where I could relax, enjoy my body, take a nice jacuzzi at two o'clock on a Tuesday, look at the mountains and just spend time being in that stillness, even though I didn't have millions of dollars in the bank, even though I didn't have millions and millions coming in every year through my business. Like I kind of thought in my mind, well, when that happens, then I'll have this lifestyle and I can relax and feel that good. But I, I already knew beyond that now. I knew, I knew better. So when the awareness came in, Kim, slow down. This is not what you need to be doing. What's going to create more for you is to just turn all the, you know, turn off the computer, get out there, hang out and look at the mountains, go hiking, hang out in the spa. So I started doing most of my time doing that. Not just like a few hours here and there. It was like most of the day of my quote unquote work day. I did understand on some level that that could create more in my life, but it was still kind of like uncomfortable because my mind was like, ah, oh, really? What happened was truly incredible because not only did I have these amazing downloads of what I could be doing in my business, but I also just became the person that I wanted to be, the person that receives that much, that could feel that at ease, like, oh, I'm going to have an acupuncture treatment today, or I'm going to sit in my bath, or I'm going to go to the jacuzzi, or I'm going to whatever and look at the mountains, instead of the person who was like, yeah, that's all good, but, 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 but I have to work really hard and do this thing. So I turned, I changed the channel for myself. So that did create way more because being that person, like who wants to tune into somebody who's like, I'm really crazy busy, but here's the things that you can do to feel better in your life. It's like, you have to embody it more and more deeply, more and more fully in order to have expansion in your life. And so when life was asking me to receive more, I was like, yes. So not only did it create way more, for what I was doing in my business and for what my clients were receiving from me. Um, but it created way more in my health and in my physical body. So at 44 years old, I became pregnant, like totally without trying, zero trying, and didn't, didn't even know that was still possible because for like six years, I'd want five, I guess it was, I'd wanted to have another pregnancy. And it was like, all right, this is not happening. It's okay. But to truly surrender to, I get to be that at ease, I get to be in that much wholeness, I get to be in this much deliciousness, even though my, it's uncomfortable for my mind, I chose to receive it and then my body reflected those shifts and changes. I got pregnant, I had a healthy pregnancy. It was pretty amazing. So 
the point is I didn't create the pregnancy. I didn't create the health. I didn't create having more energy. I didn't create having more money. I received that as a reflection of what I chose to step into. So I hope that kind of answers the question. Welcome to Sandy and Jacqueline. Jennifer says, yes, this is so me. My skin is so inflamed. I know this is related to energy flow more than anything. Allergies, gut health, autoimmunity, even though I'm told the latter is the case. The latter being, um, I don't know. Um, you can fill me in a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, Martha, welcome. Woohoo. Allison, Randy says, I took out a loan to work with the functional medicine doctor back in March, and that felt like a yes that I was choosing from an open place. And it's been a contribution in many ways, but some of the hormone issues and the Canada has not changed at all. The hair loss, which actually is the hardest. I only have one more session with him in the package I bought, and it's been challenging not to give in to the thought that somehow I didn't align with my health enough to have this time and expense bring more fruition of healing. So what I would invite you to, because this is another, took a couple of notes of what I wanted to talk about. Another piece is, can I let this not have to be on my timeline? The most important thing is that we allow the mental, emotional, sort of energetic shift because our, our thoughts, beliefs, ideas, emotions, those are energies. We can calibrate them on a different frequency. When we let ourselves have the energetic shift first, even if XYZ is not showing up out there, it will always create more. And that's because what happens physically is sort of under the program, under the direction and under the messages of what's happening psycho-emotionally, what's happening energetically. We're really just beginning to sort of not even really integrate this into conventional medicine, but just like the idea of it sneaking into what doctors are now understanding in conventional medicine. So we're just beginning to have this be more mainstreamized, but it is a very profound and scientifically grounded science of the physical body, that this is how things are created physically. So let go and sort of like forgive yourself because there's a little bit of the energy of, oh my God, I did it wrong. I didn't choose well. Why didn't I manifest more? It's not good enough. And like, let, that's not even what's happening here. You're amazing. You are already, like you are that which you are seeking. The reason you want more expansion, more health, more vitality is because that frequency of that, the, the awesomeness and ah, yes of it is a match for the essence that you truly are. So can you be more in a playfulness with letting that come into 3D mani physical manifestation and not in the, oh, this means I failed again, or oh, this means I did something wrong, or oh, this means I'm not good enough. And so let go of the timing, and then also realize that as you ascend in your own frequency, so thought is, there's frequencies. There's, oh, I'll never make it. This is crap. Who is this blonde chick even telling me? She doesn't know what the heck she's talking about. She's way too happy for me, rah, 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 and everything that goes along with that channel. And then there's like a higher one, like, mm, maybe let me think about it. Um, I'm open, I'm listening, but there's a, like a little hesitation, but you're kind of opening up and then you come up higher, like, yep, this is what I know on some level. And I'm ready to let it in even more fully. And then there's when we're totally living, like, this is the inevitable truth that I live. And this is more of an ex expression of it. And so we can tune into people and it's, it's, can be fun and joyful and expansive and like, ah, oh, this is amazing. The world is filled with people who are at the same channel I'm at. I wonder what we could create together. So there's those lower frequencies of like the quote unquote, I'm a skeptic and I'm proud to be a skeptic. Like that's a good thing. But what it actually is, is doubt, cynicism, um, unwillingness to really receive and it's always because we've been hurt and disappointed in some way. We haven't really gotten what we needed in order to be open. So there's like no wrongness of it. It's just a frequency. Um, but there are different um, like higher frequencies and lower frequencies where we can reside. So we're always beginning to invite solutions and in, opportunities, invitations in from the frequencies, the higher and higher frequencies we've come into. So for me, I will practice and I did send out... Um, these affirmations, like a couple weeks ago, we emailed it out. I'll make sure it's in the members area as well because they're really, really powerful. Now, I'm not a big user affirmations kind of person. The way I did this is kind of like instilling the new beliefs 
that on some level I already know are true, that I'm willing to receive more fully. And so I'll look myself, eyes on my own eyes, um, and feel it. And I already feel it as yes, it's true, but sometimes we gotta practice ourselves into it more and more. So I am a New York Times bestselling author. And how does that feel? And what does that do? That creates a physical cellular change in my body. I become younger and more agile and filled with vitality as I go forward through life. And you can feel the frequency of that. So I can just practice feeling that frequency. Not the same as, I gotta say it over and over, I gotta say, yes, it is true, I just don't believe it, why don't I believe it? Just feel it and percolate in it and resonate in it. And then solutions come in. I just had this incredible, um, it's a, a homeopathic thing that I found out about, and I'm like so lit up about it. Like, wow, the possibilities that creates. And it's a reflection of what I've been resonating with in the past two or three weeks with I become younger and more agile, more fit, and more filled with vitality as I go forward through life. Like the older I get, the younger I become. Um, I've been percolating with that and feeling that in my cells and connecting with that. And then it actually creates me receiving something that is a match to contribute to that even more. Do I already feel younger and more energized? Yeah, you'll, you'll actually get an energy boost when you practice this and when you feel into receiving the energy. And there can be things externally that support it and you can receive that as well. So that was kind of one of the things I was gonna talk about is the, the three pieces of manifesting is you've gotta conjure it. You've gotta actually, it doesn't mean you create it and you like M-I-H it in the external, make it happen in the 3D. You conjure it within you. How does that, if you drink the elixir of, I love myself unconditionally, you drink the elixir of, I live in a beautiful world filled with resources for me. You drink the elixir of life is on my side and I can open to receive. How does your physical body feel when you drink that in? So you're like energetically drinking it in. You revel in it. You just resonate with it. Breathe it in and let yourself consider it. So take a few breaths. What does your body have to say about that? <laughs> and one of the things that can happen is all the parts of you you've committed to that don't resonate there will come up. Yeah, 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 but that's already crap. Yeah, yeah, I've tried the affirmation thing. It doesn't work. Yeah, this person, she's not a real doctor. Like I've heard people say that to me because that's the frequency they're at. Like this isn't real medicine. And it actually very much is a real physical, scientific, medical understanding we've arrived at, but that's neither here nor there. When we're not in the frequency of it, we can't receive it. So that stuff can fall away and burn away first. Still the same medicine. Practice re resonating in this new um, frequency. Practice resonating in that yes. What if it could be? And let it burn away all that old stuff. See it? the little cynic or the little doubter or the one who's so hurt and disappointed, breathe in, witness your own pain, breathe out, let something more true come in, let something bigger come in. Okay, so that's the first thing is I must embody the essence of it before I can, because my friend Andy had sent me this message about this particular homeopathic thing like a month ago. And I was like, oh, that's cool. It sounded awesome, but I'm like, eh, I don't have time for that, right? It's not really resonating for me. I didn't even know what it was. But it was after a few weeks of practicing this, percolating in the energy of, I become younger as I go forward in life, more agile, more healthy, more fit, and like really feeling that. Now I'm on the channel of that resonance, of that yes. And then if something comes in that's a match for it, I will feel the yes. And so he reached out to me uh, the other, I think it was this morning. <laughs> and I'm like, I got to watch this. I got to look at this. And as soon as I saw what he sent, I was like, this is definitely resonating for me as a match to what I've been asking for. So that's how things can physically come in. But we've got to embody it. And like, I had to conjure that first before I could receive the resources that were coming in. Because like I said, it literally just bumped it right out. <laughs> didn't even, it didn't get my attention. So see if you can get, the, the, the second thing I was gonna say that kind of speaks a little more to this attachment is um, to be in non-attachment, I already am the essence of what I'm seeking, so I don't need to be in urgency. Kim, be, be anxious for nothing, and then just settle that down. What if I could let it come in fluidly? 
So there's, because when I'm in attachment, it's because I'm in lack. I don't have it, so I got to get it. I, I don't, it's not automatically going to flow into my life, so I got to go and seek it out and really work hard. So your system already knows that that is discordant for you. And if you tune in more and more, you'll become aware of like, okay, be anxious for nothing and let myself receive. That is not comfortable for the mind. So is there discomfort with this? Frick, yes. There can be so, oh my gosh, so much discomfort. But on a deeper level, there can be a knowing of this is part of my awakening. I have so many stories about that with just my relationship with my husband, which has probably been the greatest expansion of my life. Unbelievable discomfort. When I met him, my mind was just like, oh my God. And it was like, shut up and just be still and let's check this out. <laughs> and that's just happened so many times. So non-attachment, I already am that which I'm seeking. What would it take for me to let it come in effortlessly? And then the third thing is connect with the essence of it, not the specifics. Because people will say all the time, like, but I don't know what I want, but I don't know what the health would feel like, but I haven't had health in so long. I can't visualize my health. I can't feel my health. So all it needs to be is 2% more ease than where you're at now. So if you're in a contraction trying to figure out, how do I fight HCMR? How do I overcome chronic fatigue? What do I do about my adrenal fatigue? What do I do about my thyroid disorder? So we breathe. And you can just start by receiving. What if I could let this be easy? And just receive. What if this could be effortless? And then give yourself that 10 second pause before the mind comes in and tells you all the reasons why that's not possible for you. Just resonating in that 10 second pause. What would it take for me to let this be easy? Breathe in. Breathe out. Certainly, you could do a little EFT. It's okay. But just let it, um, let what's, what's preventing you from resonating in that release and give yourself that 10 seconds. So those are the three things I want to talk about, about manifesting. The manifesting piece of manifesting health is we, we conjure and embody the essence of it, um, not create the physical manifestation or the MIH, make it happen. Don't go into MIH. It's more about receiving. And the, se the second thing is release attachment. I am that which I'm seeking. So it's okay for it to take the time it's taking and me to be generous with myself and not hard on myself. Because I know, Randy, that comes up a lot where it's like, you know that you are this amazing presence. And then anyways, your physical self or your ego self isn't being that yet. You're kind of hard on yourself. It's like, well, I'm not being that yet in my physical, the way I'm showing up in physical 3D. And it's okay. It could be a fun game to emerge into that. And then the third thing is, it's not the specifics. It's the essence of it. So don't worry if you don't know what it looks like or you can't feel what it feels like. Just relax your body. Breathe more fully. Like just those two things. Relax your body. Breathe more fully. That will create 2% more ease than the contraction you're in and it will allow more to come in. Okay, I've got, um, Randy said, I, oh no, no, sorry. This is the one I just read. Angela says, hi from UK, woohoo. My chronic fatigue with very weak leg, oh, my health, chronic fatigue with very weak legs, so walking is a problem. I've been working with mind, body, and energy medicine for over five years, but I'm not where I wanna be. Um, this is, and, and then on the, I, the the EFT mini course that I created has a piece on fatigue and it's not a huge investment for that um, course, but this was a big one for me in the last couple of years to be really connecting with what does it take to let our body get rebooted? Because a lot of what chronic fatigue syndrome is, our body's not getting what it needs because we're operating in a frequency that is depleting. And then we can't stop because we got to try harder and try harder and keep going and keep going and push. And I can't succumb. Surrender means I'll succumb and then I'll never get off the couch. Because we don't let ourselves receive what we need, the body can't get that reboot. When I had that pattern years back, and it was funny because when I finally got diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and it had been like 
a year and a half at, at least of ha like really fighting it and having this like, whoa, I feel like I'm hit by a truck. But it actually had been years before that where I'd have these intermittent periods of the same, where I'd get like so unrelentingly fatigued and I didn't know what to do. It was the more I fought it, the more I wasn't letting a reboot happen. And when I finally let, that was why the fatigue was like the first thing that resolved um, when I had my whole healing thing and when I allowed myself to really receive what I needed. Um, my body went through such a reboot, but really, really quickly because none of my circuitry was on the, I got to push, I got to go, I can't stop. It was like, I let go of all of it. I let go of everything I think I need to have. I let go of everything I think I need to be. I let go of everything I think I am. And I, there was a reboot that could happen really quickly. Your adrenals can be repleted very quickly. Your thyroid can be repleted very quickly. But that can't happen if we aren't truly in a full surrender. If we're in like a kind of surrender, like, okay, I rested six hours and now where is it? Where's my health? Where's my health? Why isn't it here yet? So we're never really in a full surrender for five seconds. And this is the thing I've seen so much with people I've worked with with chronic fatigue is that Yes, we can replete that quickly, but it does require, and it's not that you can't get something if you're just half in, like, okay, let me just find a little ease here. It's just that it usually isn't enough to allow the full expression of what's ready to come through, not just the energy, but the ideas and the, just you're going to be a whole new being on this new channel with this reboot, who you are, how you think, how you speak, what you choose to do. There's so much more to say on this too. Okay, so I understand you're not where you want to be. And so in the so those are kind of the three points I wanted to make on the manifesting piece. The we've got to conjure it and embody it within in order to allow it to come in in 3D. Uh, the second was the non-attachment. It's not my agenda, it's not my timeline, it doesn't matter what it looks like. I already am that which I'm seeking. And then the third is it's more about connecting with the essence of the 2% more ease rather than the specifics or the full on outcome. And so then on the health side of manifesting health, um, the first one is definitely embodying love. I love myself unconditionally. And that means I love my body and how it's showing up. I love my expression, like my physical world and how it's showing up right now. That is a really multi-leveled thing because you're like, my reality is crap. People are destroying each other. We're at the verge of war. Our political system's going crazy. My health is awful. I can't get off the couch or my money, you know, I can't, all the ideas people have about money and where it's not okay. So how can I love that? How can I accept that? so that I can start where I am and have ease where I am in order to receive greater and greater amounts of ease. We can't have more of ease if we don't connect into that absolute space of ease that comes from, I love and accept exactly where I am right now. I think Randy is a great example of it because she's really on that little, that's the cusp you're on right now from, no, 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 it's not okay, I gotta do more. Certainly there has to be more for me. I'm really not enough, so I gotta make this happen. And you're already percolating in the awareness that there's something higher for you and now choosing into that of like, oh, I really do get to have it be that easy and that effortless. Like, thank you. It's got a new book of stamps. Didn't even have to lift a finger. <laughs> so sometimes we can let ourselves review, receive more and more and more when we really anchor into it, but when we're still on that fence, we don't. And so this piece with I love unconditionally, I love what's showing up unconditionally. For Randy, I love that my 3D manifestation is all over the map and looks like it's falling apart and looks like I'm on the verge of collapse. I love what I've manifested. I love the way I have shown up. Because what we do is we compare the way we have shown up to like this idealistic idea of, this higher thinking and this higher awareness and oh, life is abundant. What the heck is this crap over here? Why is my bank account not showing it? That's not gonna work. We've gotta love all of it. Doesn't mean rah, rah, yippee, love. It means I'm willing to embrace this exactly as it is without requiring it to be different right now. 
Okay. So let me see what else we've got here. Angela, okay, so the chronic fatigue, and I have huge compassion. It's not an easy thing to really surrender to what is when what is seems so unthinkable. In fact, I just had a client um, send me a message and she's really moving through that whole thing like, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to eat, I have no appetite, I'm here, I'm there, nothing's coming in. And so I've been percolating in the energy of what she is experiencing and I haven't even responded yet, but so much has already come through that is around, it's required that we be willing to truly love what is when we don't know, when we're not clear, when it isn't showing up in 3D. Cause I used to do this, it's like, okay, I love myself fully, where's my guy? I love myself fully, where's my relationship? I love myself fully, come on, didn't I do enough love myself fully, where is it? <laughs> and that is conditional love. Your body knows the difference. It cannot be fooled. It isn't the same. Can't be fooled into <laughs> as if it's enough because conditional love isn't even the same essence as unconditional love. Being willing to be unconditionally present to what's arising without flinching, without running, without needing to escape and do the escape tactic or the escape action. For me, the escape actions were to be busy and be productive and then I don't have to feel the fear of failure. Because in the 3D world, it seems like well, that's what you're supposed to do if you don't want to fail. Go and be productive. But in the energetic space I was in, that was not going to create more for me. I needed to be with that fear and let it arise so I could receive the ease of the stillness. That is what I really wanted to create in my life. So that's the first piece of the, the health aspect is I am willing to love my body unconditionally and love my 3D manifestation unconditionally. And like I said, that does extend to your relationships, your physical world, your bank account like it is none of it separate none of it and we can see that electromagnetically the body does connect with everything around us it does emit a message a signal to everything outside you and it does receive information and input from everything outside you um okay alicia hello eve oh hello beautiful eve and Kara. trying to open a new way of thinking and being to improve my health from years of having chronic fatigue syndrome. This is a big theme today. It's hard work, but getting easier as my trust in this work is growing. Amen. But I have been told in the past, I'll never get better or make progress. I'm going to pause right here. There are many, many ways that we're anchored into the collective from a very faulty understanding of science, a very faulty understanding of the body, that have become our conventional medical system that are um, faulty truths. Uh, premises, I'm separate from everything around us. Premises like if I want a physical change in my body, I need a physical, to create a physical impact in the body to make that physical change. So chemicals, pharmaceuticals, surgery. Again, not true. We're not separate from everything around us. We're not even separate from separate body parts within our cells. And we don't actually, the most powerful way to affect things physically is not on the physical level. It is absolutely on the energetic level. We can have instantaneous, massive and profound change physically when we shift the energetic frequency. We can only have temporary and sometimes very um, slow and arduous change physically when we only affect the physical, meaning you use a physical chemical to affect the physical body or treat the disease or remove the cancer. You've got to do a physical thing. Not even true. Um, but some of these indoctrinations are so, are, well, many of them are so heavily anchored that when we buy into that collective, it's really painful. And yes, it's harmful because there's a lot of people who are ready to receive something more and they're still going to the conventional medical system and being told, no, 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 that can't happen. No, 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 that's impossible. No, 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 you're gonna have this for the rest of your life. So it's up to us as individuals to choose, hmm, I'm gonna unplug from that. That's not the truth I know and I'm gonna start listening to what's in here and what resonates for me and what I know above and beyond what's out there and what others are telling me. That's the first thing that happened for me 
when I like that very short healing journey where it was like two years of trying to figure it out, 10 days of like, boom, popping into new physical reality was to say, you know what? That's not even true for me. You know, I got this diagnosis and they told me these are all the things that are going on in your body. This is what's happening in your immune system. This is what's required for you to do. And I was like, hmm, that's not even true for me. I, I wasn't inflamed before. What would it take for me to not be inflamed now? I wasn't reactive to all these, you know, da- dust mites or dog dander or like non-toxic things. Wasn't reactive to them before. What has changed that I'm reacting to them now? Why is my system so inflamed and creating this disease? So I got curious and was able to bounce out of like, like unplug from that collective. And that's what allowed me to access what I know and move much, much faster through this ascension. Okay. Randy, I've become more aware also that there's a lot of judgment toward myself around all of this as well, that I can't afford all the supplements that might help. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, sorry. I didn't finish the previous question because I paused for my little thing. Um, It's getting easier. My trust is really growing, but I've been told in the past, I'll never get better. I'll never make progress. And that was what I bought into for years. The feelings of abandonment have been what I'm dealing with lately. I feel like I've just been given up on. Yeah, no, it's that you've given up on yourself. When we buy into that collective, our body knows like, no, 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 don't go that way. That's not my truth. And it will feel bad. And so we abandon what we know. Like, yeah, my inner knowing, whatever, I'll get to that later. I probably don't know what I'm talking about. Let's listen to these quote unquote experts. They seem to know everything about everything. And it isn't that people don't know things and that you can't receive awesome guidance, but it has to come through your alignment. So something aligns. So when you join a membership like this, you're like, because it's not coming from the mind. The mind is never going to make you, have you join something like this. This won't make any sense to the mind. But the inner knowing will say, there's something here for me. I'm going to say yes. The mind will say, yeah, but, you know, people are just trying to take your money. All kinds of things that will block, 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 block. And the inner knowing will say, I'm just going to choose this anyway. And then you can receive. So you will not understand this until you have already integrated it. I have an amazing understanding of many things, but I had to let myself receive it first. So it's okay. It's not the abandonment is just what's right about you that you're not getting is that your body's registering. No, 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 no. Come back to me. We have this wisdom here. You can let go of what you're being told. Okay, Randy, I'm more aware. There's all this judgment toward myself and the idea I can't afford all the supplements that might help, but I'm still blocking myself from my own abundance in a sense that I'm doing this to myself that I should know better because of all the expansion and awareness I have already. That's so funny because that's just what I said. Like, Five minutes ago, you are aware that you're this expansive being and then you're judging how it's showing up in 3D and you don't need to do that. So I think you're conscious enough to hear those thoughts. I should know better and like feel the resonance of that and how it's discordant. And then you can keep buying out of it like, "Mm, it's okay for me to let that go. It's not even true. And let your ascension happen. You're not blocking your own abundance. Here you are. You're doing great. (laughs) Um, you can, there's not a lot of supplements that you actually need, sweet one. There's not a lot of anything you actually need. That may be why it feels heavy to be like, but I need all these supplements and then I can't afford them. You don't even need a lot of things. Um, whatever you require will come very fluidly. Jennifer says, so despite all my knowledge and comments to this work, I'm that, am I doing something wrong? Am I still in resistance? Why is my skin so inflamed? Well, that's when we get into judgment. So this is what I kind of the reason I wanted to do this session today was we can go into this. Okay. I love myself fully. Okay. I'm going to relax. Okay. Nah, nah, nah. Where's my stuff? Why is my skin so inflamed? And so it is evidence that we're not actually in true peace. So I'm not saying to love that your skin's so inflamed. This is so great. I'm just saying that when you're aware that you're in impatience it is the exact awareness you need to see like oh not really embodying the ease and peace that's really required to let that healing happen quickly i've had a lot of that as well i had this shoulder pain i I actually was going to make a video about it this week there was so much impatience like oh my god what the heck is it because i'm tuning in i'm trying to figure it out and i still have this pain and 
And then I was aware like, oh, that's not how I want to be with my body. My body for in whatever way is alerting me of something that's happening, energy I need to release. And can I just be more patient with letting that in? Because there's nothing wrong with my body. My body's just showing up to share, give me the alert. So you don't need to be in that impatience, but that you're feeling it is evidence that there's more well-being and ease to integrate. It's okay to be where I am and like just open to that space so that you can be guided to what might be useful or what might be helpful or who might be um, able to assist you. Alex, what is happening physically when you're getting yourself to start healing in the third octave of consciousness that you keep getting into your head and kicking yourself back into the first or second? I have to keep doing the whole Pono Pono to apologize to myself for getting myself uh, to start healing. And by the way, that the third octave, if that doesn't make any sense to a lot of you, um, there's a video right on my front page, drkimd.com, that talks about the octaves of consciousness. And it, I, to me, it was the best explanation I ever had for why people don't heal. It was like, oh my God, no. as we get smarter and learn more and get more fancy and like more sophisticated, there's more complicated, complicated medical problems and less healing going on. And I'm just more sick and having more problems. And it was like, what the heck is going on? And that really helped me understand the whole picture. Um, am I actually hindering the healing process by doing this to myself? Or is this just part of the process of shedding old ways of being? So the biggest thing that kept me bumping into that, the wholeness of, all that is and, and, and pure love was wanting to be there. And I'd be in that second octave and it was like, that's a better place and here I am. So not accepting right where I am. So I know it sounds so like oxymoron, <laughs> oxymoronic to the mind. That's like, but if I don't, but if I want to be here, <laughs> I can't, I can't be in total peace. I'll be here. It's so crazy, but when we are willing to be in the space of, oh, here I am, I have no idea what to eat. Here I am, as soon as I want to do something, I shut down and I'm like, no, I can't do that. I, you know, and I'd be in these states of just like gridlock, not even knowing what would feel joyful, not even knowing what would feel at ease, not even knowing what the heck to do. And it would just be a matter of, oh yeah, it's okay to be in this crazy schizophrenic state I am right now feeling so disconnected and so uncomfortable. It's okay for me to be exactly where I am. And I'd actually lean into it and enter it more fully. And that's what allows it to dissolve. So that's the biggest thing um, that happens. Hello, Patty, Jacqueline, woohoo, Stacy. We're going to finish in just a minute here. Uh, Stacy says, so does surrendering the problem or challenge allow you to receive more? Yes. That's where my confusion is coming for me. Um, that is what allows us to release what we think we know. And that's like what's holding so many things together. But I do want to say about these other two pieces. So, so the love, I mean, sorry, the manifesting and the health. The health part, A, is I've got to love my body and be willing to love what is, which just means accept and allow it, not resist it, not have to run away from it. The second is um, being in unity versus separation with my body. When I got really impatient with my arm, my, this pain in my shoulder, it's like I'm in separation. Oh, this is an annoying thing. And so many people, we do this. It's like my health problem is annoying or it's a burden or it's this oh, thing I've got to get over. Well, if you had a little child in need, you wouldn't be like, oh, God, what the heck? Are you over it yet? You'd be like, sweetheart, I love you. It's okay. What else do you need? And you let that child receive unconditionally. You've got to be in that unity with your body. You are not separate from your body. Your body is registering higher wisdom that you have for yourself that maybe you haven't let it in fully yet, but be willing to receive from your body and be in unity with your body as a little child. And then the third thing is I can only feel well now it's not about waiting, but I don't feel well now, but my system, I still have cancer, but I still have chronic fatigue, but I still have inflammation. Okay. That's your 3d experience. And in the 5d multi-dimensional you, you can experience well-being right now, exactly where you are. Even though I have this inflammation, I love and accept myself fully. Even though my lab results are showing this, I love and accept myself fully. 
even though there's cancer in my physical body, I love and accept myself fully. Can I enter that state of unconditional peace with what is? Now, it doesn't mean then I don't do anything about the 3D. Can I enter that state of unconditional peace with what is so that there's clarity? And I can then be guided and it can be effortless and be like the one thing instead of 25,000 things trying this and trying this and I got to do that. I can only feel well now. I cannot wait for my physical body to heal and oh, then when that happens, I'll feel well. It has to be in the now. So this 5D versus 3D, enter the fifth dimensional self, the one who is infinite so that you can connect, even if it's for five minutes a day or for one breath 12 times a day so that it can come into the 3D, so that it can come into your physical body. That's the third thing I wanted to share about what is health. So those are the three requirements of health, the three things that are, you know, how we manifest and read principles of manifestation and the three requirements for physical health. So I'm so excited that we did this, um, this Mind Body TV episode today, I'm sharing so much love with you. If you are not a member and you would like to be a member, for those of you listening to the podcast later, it's at drkimd.com forward slash membership. There are, um, yeah, for any of you who, who want to receive more assistance, we'll be in the Facebook group, the Mind Body Live membership. And I definitely welcome your questions as we go through this week. We're super excited about expanding this program and seeing what's possible here as people come into a more intimate forum to receive this way. Thank you for showing, um, for showing up and being seen. That's really another requirement for health. It's um, like aligned with that number one. I love myself unconditionally to allow the real expression of who I am. We are going through a massive shift in consciousness right now, leaving behind the old aspect of, Mm, I'm going to show up like I'm so perfect and put on this veneer, but who I really am inside, I'm really scared. To an expression of, <sighs> I'm willing to be seen completely and fully as I truly am and let that be my third dimensional physical expression. There is so much more alignment with that. So sending you so, so much love. I will look through the comments after we complete today. And welcome to the membership. Lots of love. I'll see you soon.